Hi there. So welcome back to this series of MVC website in ASP.NET 5 with React component. And in this lecture, I'll be I mean, talking about the server side data, how to fetch data from the server. So accordingly, we shall cover server side data fetching from the server and reactive state. And let's switch over to Visual Studio now. So before I switch over to Visual Studio, let me ask you to subscribe to my channel, view my videos, share my videos with your like-minded friends and put your valuable comments which will be answered as soon as possible. So now in the Visual Studio, I've got this React demo solution which we have worked and this is the third part of the series of tutorials. So I strongly suggest you to go through the first two parts because this part is built on the first two lectures and I will put the links to the first two lectures in the description and let's return some data from the server. Now we need to first create a C sharp class to represent our comments. Now I should have a models folder which it is there because I have used the MVC template okay and I'll create a comment model.cs class. So accordingly, I'll right click the models folder. And at the moment we have just the error view model. So I'll create another class add class and name this class as comment model and click on add to add this new class. So comment model class is added for me. Now this public class comment model, it will have three properties, an ID of type int and then string author and a text also of a string type. So I've got this, uh, let me quickly write it down. So prop tab tab. So this will be ID instead of type property. ID gets it. So string author. Sorry, this author and then. another string text comment text and click on control s to save this okay in real application you would use the repository pattern here and retrieve the comments from a database for simplicity we will modify our controller to have a hard coded list of comments okay so, but we will be using controller because we want to fetch the data from the server side or server side so within the controllers folder, I have got a home controller.cs and there is somehow this home controller one.cs is also created, which I will delete because it's not used. So I'll delete this one. And coming back to home controller.cs, I will change the entire code with the code that is with me on my clipboard. And this is this, and I will start explaining what this code does is actually it uses a home controller which is um, derived from the controller class and it will de declare an i list type of comment model comment model which returns an i list and call it comments underscore comments and this is the static home controller this is the static constructor and in which this comments field is initialized with a new list of comment model and we have this id author and text because as you know this comment has got these three properties okay id author and text right and it is given some hard coded value and then this action result index was there it was earlier returning i action result but this is the same thing action result okay and uh, i action result is the in, i mean 
interface which is implemented by action result okay a default implementation of i action result now let's also add a new controller action to return the list of comments so accordingly i have on my clipboard this action method which is now dumped over here is root is attribute root attribute is comments and public action result comments it returns a json object with comments which is this one a list of comment model okay now this route attributes route with comments it specifies that this action this comments action method should be used when front slash comment is loaded this method of defining url route is known as attribute routing okay and response cache response cache location dot non so no store equals true so there is no caching the response cache attribute is used here to prevent browsers from caching the response when designing a real world api caching of api requests should be considered more carefully for this tutorial it is simply to ignore or disable caching now let's restart debugging and we'll browse to front slash comments okay so pressing the play button again when the browser comes up i have hit front slash comments localhost colon ports front slash comments and i get everything is in json okay data included as json so without this the data is the one that we were used to see earlier right now we'll be fetching from the server now that we have a data source so let's close this application close the browser it will close the stop the application so once we have a data source we can replace the hard coded data with the dynam dynamic data from the server we'll remove the data prop and replace it with a url to fetch so in the react dom so let's go back to tutorial.jsx file and in the react dom dot render now comment box instead of data equals data within the curly braces we will have the url which is equal to front slash within double quotes front slash comments okay and the rest of the things remain unchanged document dot get element by id within curly uh, within uh, circular braces it is content okay content however in a real app you should generate the url server side via url dot action call and pass it down or use route js rather than hard coding it this tutorial hard coded it it's for simplicity so i am hard coding it without going into the complexity of url dot action call and this component is different from the prior components because it will have to re-render itself the component won't have any data until the request from the server comes back at which point the component may need to render some new comments okay so far based on its props each component has rendered itself once props are immutable they can be muted mutated they are passed from the parent and are owned by the parent okay they can't be changed immutable means to implement interactions we introduce mutable state to the component now this dot state is private to the component and can be changed by calling this dot set state and passing an object that represents changes in the state when the state up updates the component re-renders itself so render methods are written declaratively as functions of this dot props and this dot state the framework guarantees the ui is always consistent with the inputs when the server fetches data we will be changing the comment data we have let's add an array of comment data to the comment box component as its state so accordingly above within this comment box component and above the render we'll write this we'll create a constructor and pass in props and this will be super super classes the parent classes props and this dot state equals data array of data okay so that's what i said 
to implement interactions we introduce mutable state to the component so this dot state is prior to the component and can be changed by calling this dot set state but we are not interested in that and all i need to also add now here is here in this comment list data will now come from this dot state dot data instead of this dot props dot data this dot state dot data so just save it and end comment form now the constructor executes exactly once this constructor executes exactly once during the life cycle of the component and sets up the initial state of the component now we'll have to remember to call the super class this is the super class the class we are extending react component by the super props before using the this keyword okay you have to call the super props now we'll be updating the state when the component is first created we want to get some json from the server and update the state to reflect the latest data we'll use the standard xml http request api to retrieve the data if you need support for old browsers mainly old internet explorer you can use an ajax library or a multipurpose library such as jquery component will mount executes immediately and only once before rendering occurs in the following example component will mount loads of data from our xml http request and assigns it to the data variable finally it sets the data variable in the state using the set state so accordingly we will put this bit in the comment box component above render this piece of code component will mount so what this does component will mount executes immediately and only once before the rendering occurs and in this example component will mount loads the data from our xml http request and assigns it to the data variable okay and finally it sets the state data variable in the state using the set state method like this now i will make further changes to the comment box component and i will please bear with me i will come to the explanation in a bit so i will change this component will mount method with load comments from server and everything else will be the same within this load comments from server block right and i will also put this piece of code just above the render and below the load comments from server component did mount okay and then save it now comes the explanation so here we are using component did mount it is a method called automatically by react after a component is rendered for the first time previously we have used component will mount and now we are using component did mount which is a method called automatically by react after a component component is rendered for the first time now by moving the xml http request call from component will mount which is executed only once before rendering to a function called load comments from the server this one we can then call it multiple times from component did mount okay you can call it multiple times from component did mount like we are doing it here and we are again calling load comments from server again so you can do it multiple time at a set interval to check for any updates to the comments now the key to these dynamic updates is the call to this dot set state so where is the this dot set state this dot set state we replace the old array of comments with the new one from the server and the ui automatically updates itself because of this reactivity it is only a minor change to add live updates we'll use simple polling here but you could easily use signal or other technologies and then we'll come to this react dom dot render comment box url comments poll interval 2000 so that is the 
Polling. All interval equals two thousand So all we have done here is move the Ajax call to a separate method and call it when the component is first loaded and every two seconds after that. Okay. So we'll leave it at that. And in the next lecture, we'll talk about adding new comments and the form element. Okay. So in this lecture, we have seen how to fetch the data from the server side and how the components did mount and component will mount work and how we have updating the state in this lecture.